This is Unit 3, Block 5, Example 2. It says, suppose that we have customer demand for a product given by this demand function, where we plug in P, which is the price per item, and Q is the number of items sold. It says to find a formula for elasticity of demand. Remember, price elasticity of demand is defined as Q prime of P times P over the original function, Q. So we have the derivative of Q, which is negative 500 P minus 6,000 times P over the original function Q, which is negative 250 P squared minus 6,000 P plus 50,000. I might just simplify that a little bit. E of P is, I'm going to distribute that P. The numerator is negative 500 P squared minus 6,000 P. And the denominator is negative 250 P squared minus 6,000 P plus 50,000. Now notice here, you cannot just like cancel the 6,000 P over 6,000 P. Um, you can't cancel out any P values here. The only thing you really could do is factor out maybe a common factor of 100 and cancel that, but it's not really going to reduce anything for us. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it in this form. It then asks us to take our elasticity function and find the price elasticity at a price of 1.75. I'm going to plug 1.75 into our elasticity function above. Be careful when you type this in Excel or you type it in your calculator that you put parentheses around the numerator and divided by parentheses around the denominator so that you are sure to have the entire numerator divided by the entire denominator. Parentheses. It's a really common error I see that students forget to put parentheses around that when they plug it in Excel or in the calculator. So I'm popping this thing in my calculator, plugging in 1.75 for P. I get negative 0.31 for the elasticity value. This is saying, at a price of $1.75 per item, if they raise the price 1%, demand will decrease 0.31%. This, since this elasticity value is a number between zero and negative one, we know that demand is inelastic, and this tells us that they should raise the price 1% because demand falls a little bit as price goes up a lot, the result will be that revenue increases. Part C asks us to evaluate the same elasticity function at a different price. We're going to plug in 4.83 for the price. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get an elasticity value of negative 2.68, which means at a price of $4.83 per item, if they raise the price 1%, they will sell 2.68% fewer items. Since this elasticity value is a number less than negative 1, we know that demand is elastic. This tells us the price goes up a little, 1%. The demand will fall a lot, 2.68%. The result would be revenue would decrease, so they should not raise the price 1%. In Part D, they ask us to take the elasticity formula and identify when demand will be unit elastic. Unit elastic means E of P is equal to negative 1. So here's my elasticity formula. I'm going to solve when E of P is negative 1. So I'm going to remove the E of P and write negative 1 equals. This would be OK if you wanted to solve in Excel. You can put this in Excel and use Solver to identify when it equals negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and show how to do it by hand. So if you want to solve this thing by hand, that's fine. I have a fraction on the right side of the equation. In order to solve this, I would multiply both sides by the denominator. So I take this whole denominator and multiply both sides. It would cancel on the right. And on the left side, when I multiply by that denominator, I'll be distributing a negative 1 to everything, which would leave positive 250p squared plus 6,000p minus 50,000 on the left. I've distributed that negative 1. And on the right, 
all that remains is that numerator because the denominator would cancel when I multiply both sides by the denominator. I have a quadratic equation. I want to make sure my quadratic is set equal to zero. So I'm going to add 500p squared on both sides, and I'm going to add 6,000p on both sides. So now on the left side, I have 750p squared. 6,000p plus another 6,000p makes 12,000p. And I have a minus 50,000 on the left. That equals zero. And now I use the quadratic formula. So p equals negative 12,000 plus or minus square root of. I need to do a b squared minus 4ac. So that's 12,000 squared minus 4 times 750 times negative 50,000 b squared minus 4ac. So underneath the square root, I have 294, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 all over 2a, so that's divided by 1,500. And if we pop that in the calculator, I get p is approximately 3.43, and I get p is approximately negative 19.43. I don't care about the negative answer because p represents price per item, and we can't have a negative price per item. So we would say that demand is unit elastic at a price of $3.43 per item. And remember, the price where demand is unit elastic is the price where revenue is highest. In part E, it says now go back and look at your original Q of P function, which remember was negative 250P squared minus 6,000 P plus 50,000. And it says this time use the first derivative test to identify the maximum revenue. So Q of P gives us number of items sold. Revenue would be price per item, P, times number of items sold, Q of P. So I just need to find revenue as being P times Q of P. If I distribute a P to this Q of P function, my revenue function is negative 250 P cubed minus 6,000 P squared plus 50,000 P. I just took revenue equals price P times Q of P and to use the first derivative test to maximize revenue. We find the derivative. I get negative 750p squared minus 12,000p plus 50,000. There's the derivative. I need to find when the derivative equals 0. So it's 0 equals negative 750p squared minus 12,000p plus 50,000. Notice me finding where this derivative equals zero is exactly the same thing as the equation I solved above a minute ago. So P is 3.43 and P is negative 19.43. I don't really care about the negative 19 because that's a negative price. And to show that revenue is actually maximized at this price, that this is a max, that P equals 3.43 actually is a maximum on the graph. I'm going to evaluate the derivative on the left side, so r prime of 0. Evaluate the derivative on the right side, so maybe r prime of 5. If you plug 0 into this derivative r prime function, you get 50,000, which is positive. r prime is positive on the left side of that p equals 3.43, which means r, revenue, is increasing on the left side of 3.43. If you plug 5 into the derivative function, you will find r prime is negative, which means r, the revenue, is decreasing on the right side of p equals 3.43. So the revenue function is increasing, then flattens at p equals $3.43, and then decreasing. So yes, we have proven $3.43 is a maximum on the revenue function which is exactly what we found when we did it with the elasticity function.